Today we'll take a look at the Mitel Connect client software. Client software is the same for the cloud and for the premise. There have been quite a few changes to the look, however the functionality is the same between this newer version and older versions. We'll start at the top and the quick dialer search bar. We click here, we can see all of my contacts, anybody that's in the system directory, anything that's been pulled up from Outlook. I also have an option of looking at Exchange Public Matches as well if we're using Exchange Public Contacts. I can type in a name, look at my direct matches, and I can see Ken right here. So I get three things here. I get that Ken is available, it's not on the phone, and that he is marked as one of my favorites. If he was on the phone, it would show up and say on the phone. If he was out of the office, it would reflect that status as well. We can use the quick dialer bar for 10-digit phone numbers as well. You can place the phone number in here. It's going to pull a match from my Outlook contacts. You can click on the contact here. You can see any calls that have gone back and forth between us. I can hit enter and dial the number. The nine circles are a dial pad. If you're using a soft phone, these come in handy either when dialing a number or when working through an auto attendant. When I click on Ken's name, the contact card expands to the right. Here I get info, any chat messages we've had, ingoing and outgoing calls, and any voicemails he's left for me. Additional options here, I can call his voicemail box. If he was on the phone, I could set him to alert when available. I can click the green dial button and just call him, or we can initiate a screen share. When I click the pull down under my name, I can change my availability state manually. I have the options of available, in a meeting, out of the office, on vacation, do not disturb, or custom. I also have the option to log out. When I click my name, if I have a LinkedIn photo that I've associated, it will appear here. I can change from desk phone to soft phone, or I may select an external assignment number. Press one to connect or automatically answer. My standing conference bridge is right here. If I'd like to add a new one, I may. Contacts is all the people that I've previously selected as a favorite, either through my Outlook contacts or if they're part of the phone system. I can see if they're available, in a meeting, or in this case, on the phone. If I hover over them, permissions based, I can see who they're on the phone with. The Recents tab has a counter indicating that I have one missed call. I select Recents. I can see my calls. Red indicates a missed one. I can filter by name or number. I can also select to see just my missed calls. The voicemails tab will show me my voicemails. I've got an indicator that there's one unheard voicemail. I'll select the voicemails tab and click on the subject line, the name here, Henry, and I get some options. If they're on the same system, I can reply to a voicemail with a voicemail. I can forward the voicemail, add a note, make it urgent, private, so it can't be forwarded to anyone else, request a read receipt. I can play the voicemail either through my PC speakers or my phone, and I can also delete the voicemail. Deleted voicemails go into the deleted voicemails tab here. This is cleaned up at about midnight, so if you want to undelete it, undelete them on the same day. Selecting the events tab ties into my Outlook calendar. The Connect Client synchronizes with your Outlook account. You'll give it your credentials. In this case, we're using Office 365. And I can see in gray, these are normal uh, events. And then this one here is an event that I created using Outlook or the Conference Bridge. Clicking on it expands it. You can see that there's a meeting. I can look and get the meeting and dial in info. I can one click have it call me. I can call me at, and give it a phone number. And I can click on the computer screen to gain access to the meeting. From here, I have meeting controls, mute, record, raise hand, add people, lock the meeting. This is chat in the meeting. Even people that are participating from outside of your organization and use the web page will be able to see this chat. Meetings are created by going into events, selecting new, and give my meeting a name, how long it's going to last, a location, collaborative or presentation. Collaborative means I can pass control over to others. I can invite organizers, presenters, I can set agenda items in minutes that you can actually go through the whole hour and put beginning, middle, and end, an overview, and I can add files from Dropbox. Hit Create, 
and it will create our meeting. The last item are work groups. If you're assigned to a work group, you will see the work group option here in the icon. When I select work groups, I get a choice to log in. I can see what work groups I'm a member of. I'll hit log in. Now I'm on the queue. Show work group details will show me any queues and anybody that's in the queue. The agents, if I'm a work group supervisor, here I can put an agent in wrap or log them out. And if there's any voicemails in a work group I'm part of, I'll see the voicemails here. My administrator has assigned me a toolbar. I can access the toolbar by clicking the pull down, selecting show toolbar. And we see the buttons. The buttons do not come pre-populated. You click the plus sign and you get a buffet of all the buttons that the administrator has given you access to. As you select a button, it will appear in descending order. So the order of the buttons is dependent on what order you select them in. The icon area can be compacted as well. This has been a look at the Mitel Connect Client Build 1803 March 2018.